Okay, we're back here live at IBM IOD. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out through advanced extracting signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, the co-founder of Wikibon.org. Go to siliconangle.com for the reference point in tech innovation. Go to Wikibon.org for free research. You're the research analysts there putting out free content. And of course, uh, you know, always come by theCUBE and see where we are in the events. We're going to be at uh, Amazon Web Services event. We'll be all the events, extract a signal from the noise and share that with you. Uh, our next guest uh, is Tom DeClerc, uh, CIO of Superior Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, Dave, you and I love to talk to about CIOs because, you know, maybe we get the real scoop on things. <laughs> so first, why are you here at IBM IOD? Let's get that out of the way. Let's talk about some of the things you're doing here and sure. what you're seeing here. Sure. So we, uh, so I've been with the company three years. Um, we're a, a staffing organization. Uh, why I'm here, I was actually here last year, and um, we implemented three major systems in the last three years. One was SAP Enterprise, the ERP system, second being uh, IBM Connections, and the third being uh, Co IBM Cognos. And so over the course of the three years, you know, we've been trying to roll out these projects. So I'm here to, to learn more about you know, the capabilities of Cognos. And the biggest one for me is that with Cognos and SAP, um, SAP when they bought, or not SAP, I'm sorry, when IBM bought Cognos, uh, it was at 8.1 they had a report pack specifically for SAP customers. So when they went to 10.1 and 10.2, they didn't offer that product. So they're, um, they just started developing a year ago. I sat down with some senior executives of the IBM organization and said, you guys are losing an opportunity here of customers that have an implementation of SAP and trying to get information out other than using um, SAP's product, business analytics. So they, over the course of the year, have been developing a report pack that they can offer their customers. So we're part of the beta testing program for IBM. Um, and so that's, I'm, I'm here to, to actually talk to some other people and understand some well, of the things. They listen to you, that. so you had an impact on product development. That's got to be. Well, the, yeah, there's, there's the continuous improvements. Uh, even on the, even on the uh, when well, you look at the report pack now, it's still in my, my mind. And I've, and I've had this feedback back to IBM. There's a to-do list. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but that's, with any type of a rollout of any product, you can expect that. So tell us a little bit more about Superior Group. You guys, your staffing company. With, yeah, so we're a, we're a company that's uh, headquartered in Buffalo, New York. Um, and we started back in 1957. It's a privately held company. Uh, we have a total of 400 staff employees and roughly anywhere from seven to 9,000 um, uh, contract employees. So we provide workforce solutions as well as outsourcing um, and primarily in three areas, people, process, as well as um, the outsourcing, project outsourcing. So on the people side, it's your traditional uh, recruiting for staff augmentation, um, executive um, research, recruiting, as well as direct placement. And then on the um, process side, we offer managed services um, program. We also offer vendor managed services, independent, con independent um, contractor compliance. And then on the outsourcing, we have IT outsourcing, HR outsourcing. Um, so that's pretty much our, our company's makeup. And Tom, we were talking uh, off camera about sort of the role of the CIO and you know, you'd like to uh, everybody would like to be more strategic if they had time, but a lot of the CIOs, especially in mid-sized organizations, you mm -hmm. just don't have as many you know, people to, to be able to sit back and do some of those more strategic things. Um, but so, a lot of CIOs talk about transforming their organization. You've kind of transformed it with three huge projects sure. <laughs> in the past, what would you say this was? Two years? Yeah so, yeah, that, yeah, so let's put this perspective. SAP was started in July of 2010, and then we started last year with the IBM Connections and the Cognos reporting. Okay, so but still, over sure, the course of, course of the, yeah. I mean, that's, that's some major disruptions to oh, your absolutely. business. Talk about how you manage that. So uh, it was extremely challenging, especially given the number of resources that we have. We're a, a mid-sized company, um, and when I, so I came from a manufacturing organization, spent 15 years working for a manufacturing environment. So going from that vertical into a professional services vertical, I was used to, used to having a lot of uh, IT resources to be able to support um, an organization. So um, you know, highly leveraged the, the uh, contractors and consultants, um, both with SAP, um, their implementing partner as well as um, an IBM. It was critical for us to, to leverage IBM's knowledge and, and their skill set in order to be successful in rolling out our products. So the SAP rollout was, was the most complicated, I presume, Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, by far. Oh, right? by far. It took, took literally yeah, years we, to do Yeah, it. so we rolled out ECC 6.0, their latest, with a full suite um, payroll. So we're 
provide payrolling as one of our services. So HCM, which is human capital management, the sales and distribution, material management. So a lot of the fun fundamental components of SAP we rolled out. So um, it was uh, it was quite a, an interesting experience to say was the that, least. Was that core uh, yes. human capital management or success yep. factors? No, nope, it was core. We've looked at success factors about, about a year ago. Uh, and it just doesn't fit quite fit at this point in time. Uh, as they start to develop and their product becomes a little more mature, that may be a, a better fit for our organization. And connections, what was the driver behind bringing that in? Talk about that a little bit. Sure, so for us, um, connections, we, we, we did, did some analysis um, early this year, uh, back in January, we went a project strategy where we looked and discussed with some of our internal associates and interviewed about 30 staff employees. And one of the funnel, well, maybe two fundamental things that came back out of that analysis was, one, we don't communicate properly our business goals throughout our organization. So we're headquartered in Buffalo, but we have over 50 locations worldwide. So we have a lot of connect, you know, offices remotely and people that aren't sitting at our headquarters. And that was another concern or feedback that was brought back to us was that we don't have the ability or that the people at the remote offices felt like they weren't part of the, the whole process or um, communicating properly with our corporate headquarters. So we felt that this would be a, a perfect platform to allow us to enable that. And so we did quite a bit of research. We have a director of uh, marketing um, and mobile strategy that went through a complete analysis and we looked at the SharePoint product. But what's nice about the, this product as opposed to the SharePoint is the, the look and feel of you know like the LinkedIn, the Twitter, and that social media aspect of it. Um, so it really leveraged, us, leveraged for us an opportunity to, to collaborate um, and to reach out to these locations. So the objectives were collaboration, better communication. Um, so how is that being used? How widely is it being used? How did it change things? I'm sure. kind of curious as to the outcome there. So actually, it the, was the, a very positive outcome. And it, you know, as you roll out, a, um, when you take a company and you actually do a transformation into uh, a social media type uh, organization, uh, it's never, in my opinion, never done. It's a continuous process. So we're still evolving as we go along. I think the key is to be uh, upfront is to have the right adoption strategy. So last year in January, I attended the uh, I, uh, IBM Connect down in Florida, and I actually participated in an event with some of the senior execs with Sandy, Sandy Carter from uh, IBM, who heads up that uh, part of the organization, the social media. And so it really it was about adoption strategy. And it's, it's key to really, not only is it just to implement it, that's an IT thing, and that's pretty straightforward, but I've seen in the past, it's, it's always the challenge of not only just implementing the technology, but then it's, it's adopting and getting your users to use that. And so because it had that look and feel that a lot of the people are familiar with, you know, your Facebooks and that, uh, it, it, it's actually been extremely successful in rolling that out. Now that said, we still think there's additional opportunities and we're looking at doing some enhancements, social dash dashboarding, looking at uh, executive blogs. Um, a, a big value add for our organization is just when we roll it out, not just internally to our staff employees, but rolling it out to our contractors. So we have anywhere between seven to 9,000 contractors working for Superior. And so they'll be working in, in our business. There's, there's a high turnover rate. You'll, you'll go and we'll, we'll place someone at a company. They'll maybe work there for a month, two months, a week. And then when they leave, that knowledge goes away with them. So our, we're really targeting our value add to be able to roll this out to even to our contract employees. So when they go work on site, they start to collaborate, share information. And in the event that they do leave, we we've, we've, we've still harvest it, that information. And that's bi-directional, too. I mean, they're a representation of your company, uh, even though they they're transient, but mm -hmm. so you can communicate to them, like you say, executive blogs, what the what the corporate messaging is, policies, whatever it is, that right. they can take into, into as representing you essentially as an extension of your workforce, and as you say, you get knowledge back, right? right. Oh, absolutely. And so one of the the, the key values that we, we place is that when we did that analysis that I said earlier, is that we didn't feel like there was a communication. So now with the social media platform in place now, we have people that are in our Bangalore office can communicate and feel like they're in touch with our corporate headquarters and also with their, their coworkers that are sitting at on-site facilities that are customers. So it really has improved that collaboration and that communication. It's just really brought the organization together. Did you ever think at one point, well, why don't we just use you know, publicly available social tools, uh, well, Facebook or LinkedIn or just you know, start a blog. Yeah, we and our organization has done that. Um, we have the Twitter account, the Facebook account, but this was an opportunity for us to to develop it and, and tailor it more, customize it more for our, our 
have specific names. So you've so integrated those public networks, oh, absolutely. social networks, right? Yeah, so if, you, if you go to our, our website, you'll see the links and connections right into that. Yeah, so functionally, um, it's obviously a, 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 more, a more rich environment, you know, mm -hmm. connections, right? So why don't we sure. talk about that a little bit? What sort of, what additional value did that bring to you? Because you're paying for it. Well, sure. Right? So you had to justify it. What value did you get out so of it? So there's several um, areas that we feel have brought value. One is you can, it's a platform that can be accessed anywhere. So you don't have to be on our internal network to be able to access and collaborate and communicate, mm -hmm. right? So that was a huge value add for our organization. It allows us to connect and stay, stay together. It empowered our users to be able to um, contribute uh, openly, um, be able to collaborate, to be able to innovate, um, and be able to take calculated risks. Um, from an IT standpoint, we see a reduction in email. Uh, I don't have the actual numbers to tell you what percentage reduction in email, but I'm pushing very strongly that we have an opportunity to use and leverage connections instead of sending emails. Traditionally, you know, people send an email, check this, where with connections, you put the, post the content or you put the files, upload the files in there, and they'll send a notification. So you're not plugging, you know, plugging up your email system with additional data, so. Yeah, there's a productivity aspect of that too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and Tom, I think, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and the other thing is that, you know, the time to, to market for solutions um, has definitely reduced, and, and even the, the increase in efficiency. So I know we, we spent some time um, looking at, um, I think it was Ed Brill's book on opting in, and then there's his, his situation that he identifies in the book is the traditional product manager that you find in, in manufacturing is really moving more towards a social product manager, leveraging the IBM connections, where for Sapir we took an opportunity to do that. So I got to ask you about the social software. Dave and I have been tracking Jive, all these other companies, Yammer. The Facebook for the enterprise is kind of what they've been calling it. But the feedback we've been hearing from CIOs was, ah, I just I signed something, it's, it's in the social media team is running it, They're that other team. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about the metaphor that the social media teams are a lot like the web teams in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we need a website. Yeah, the kids are doing it, right? Like the, the, the new guys, the young guys are putting, you know, we got web pages, searchable. It grew, obviously it's relevant. The websites grew and became big business e-commerce. Social media is the same way. It's like everyone can see that it's real. They know it's going to be important. There's not a lot of budget associated with it, not a lot of personnel. So the issue is, is that they get implemented, these sale, they get sold these software packages and then they got to implement it. It's kind of like communities, right. but yet there's other stuff happening. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, events, live streaming, so a lot of other social activations going on. So, so um, I want to get your take on it. as a CIO. Do you look at, get involved in levels like that on the app side? Is those apps decisions made with that in mind of like the personnel costs and, and, and the actual to run it? And I, you know, some guys just say, hey, I bought that, I don't use it anymore. Why? It's just it was too much hassle. Right. So there's yeah. a hassle factor. What do you take, what's your take? So, so my take is, first of all, I'm very big on when I get an asset or acquire an asset, it's best utilizing that asset. I, you know, when I came to this organization, I saw several uh, situations where assets were purchased, to your point, and just sitting idle because maybe it was a, you had to take additional initiative to implement that. So in, in our situation, um, I worked very closely with a gentleman that really did most of the work and doing all the research, and, and his, his name's Frank Golo. Uh, he handles our, he's a director of digital um, mobile strategy. And so he went out and did all the work for us. Came back and sat down with myself and our president, reviewed what makes the most sense. I came from a, a manufacturing facility that utilized the SharePoint, so I was big at SharePoint. Uh, so I was kind of was pushing in that direction, but when I actually sat down with him and we went through really the true value adds, yeah. and what we can gain from that, it was really a no-brainer for us. Do you ever have a situation where you, you, put, you put your fist down and say, hey, you know what, we just got to abandon that right now, let's cut our losses, move on. Uh, in, in particular example, there's another use case where same, same situation, I won't name the vendor, uh, it wasn't IBM, <laughs> it was another one where, hey, we want to do some new things, well, we don't have the staff. The guy's making us drive this engine <laughs> until we get an ROI out of it. In other words, they were like, we're going to ride this pony sure. until it either collapses right. or ROI comes out of it. When in reality, they're just driving down a cul-de-sac. Yeah. So, so at some point in an emerging market like we're in, Agile is the option to abandon, right? You got to know oh. when to, to cut the cord, right? Oh, absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm not in a position where I'd say absolutely wouldn't ban it if it made sense. It's, it's a hard be the right, decision. It's, right, it's got to be a business decision. Well, ultimately, uh, my, my position has always been it's you got to work with the business and let the business drive and not IT. IT is there to enable the business, so we can provide our input and on the day they let them make the decisions. 
Now, listen, we didn't talk about the Cognos implementation in any kind sure. of depth. So tell me, tell me what you're doing with, with Cognos. We talked a little bit about the SAP extension, but sure. what, what, how are you using Cognos? So primarily, we have, a, as I mentioned before, part of our business is in the managed services um, uh, programs. So we offer MSPs, which we have a tool called WorkNexus, uh, which is our vendor management solution as, as well as our MSP. They, uh, our customers will use this tool for recruiting, um, for looking at time clocks, looking at approving timesheets, um, invoicing, and so forth. So we have some pretty strict requirements of pulling that information out and providing reports to our customers. We use our platform that we've developed on is based on a domino environment. So we, in order to give them the reports, we create what's called ad hoc reports uh, out of Domino, very limited capabilities. So that was our first target area, was to use Cognos to provide more enriched type dashboards, uh, active type reports um, for our customers. We're just about completed with that part of the project. The next is really to pull reports out of SAP. And so the standard reports that, that I have with, um, that IBM has provided is really more in the SD area as well as in um, the MM area. So for our organization, we're so heavily on payroll and people, uh, we really need to have reports targeting in that area. So in the next year, I'm trying to, to work with a partner, a local partner in our area, LPA Systems, to help develop more reports tailored towards SAP to provide workers' compensation code. I need to run a report that pulls out the workers' compensation. To do it in SAP is so much more costly than to do it out of, out of a Cognos. Um, and so that's our, our, our goal in the next year is really to pull more reports uh, using Cognos out of SAP. Um, okay, um, I wonder if we could uh, talk a little bit about cloud. Sure. Um, what's your sort of stance on that? You know, some CIOs say no way, others say yes. Oh, this got you know shadow IT going to the cloud. What's the state of, of cloud from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, and even a SaaS at your organization? Sure. So we're currently in the process. Actually, uh, I'm looking at our organization and a traditional IT become a cost center. So I'm trying to actually move it into a profit center by offering services. So we're targeting in the Buffalo area anyway. Small companies we're offering hosting cloud-based service, whether it be a private or whether it be a public cloud services. Um, I'm not opposed at all to using a cloud-based solution. In fact, I'm on, on my SAP side, for my DR site, I'm doing just that. I have a, a contract with a, with a company that's providing me a, a cloud-based solution for my DR. Okay, so, um, but, so, so you use it for, for disaster recovery. Are you mm -hmm. doing any sort of production apps in the cloud, or would you ever consider doing that? Or? No, because we, uh, I would consider, I'm not sure if I'd consider this company, because the, our information is, is very is very controlled. Um, we fall under the SSA E16 because we, house da we host data that has in the HIPAA regulations, all the different regulations. So we have people's social security number and that. So to offer that in the cloud, not to say that it's not secure, but we have much better control, and we have an infrastructure in our organization that has enough bandwidth um, has enough cooling, all the, the normal environmentals that you would have for a data center. So right now for us, it makes more sense for us. But in three to five years from now, maybe even sooner than that, we'll probably look at possibly what's the cost differentiation between doing it in-house, having the resources do it versus offering. What about test and dev? Are you, are you doing any test and dev stuff? In oh yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. So we have in our SAP environment, we have a traditional three-tier uh, landscape. So we've got dev quality um, in the production, all of which is housed inside. Um, the decision actually to have that to have that done was before I joined the company. So we, the decision was made, let's say in May of uh, 2010, I joined in July. Um, had I been beforehand, I really would have pushed to have that hosted somewhere else because in my opinion, for an organization especially like ours, we don't have the technical expertise to be able to manage you know, the basis ca capabilities, the architecture, the hardware, all that type of stuff. So I think that's a, that's a better fit for most people when you do an SAP implementations of looking at that maybe the first, second, or third year, if you, especially if you don't have that experience if you're new to an SAP type environment. Are you, are so you doing any Hadoop? No. No? No. No, no use case for it, right? No. Uh, uh, using Bitcoin at all? No. <laughs> we were having a fun conversation. conversation last night about Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, Still look at the it. The next tulip craze <laughs> would, you know. Yeah. <laughs> PayPal's looking at it it's in the news, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> It's not mainstream enterprise right. yet. We love, we love talking to CIOs. You know, obviously, at Wikibon community, we have a lot of CIOs. We have a lot of CIOs in our network. And uh, sure. you know, it's a challenging opportunity, but the, days, the good days are ahead. I mean, we're seeing a huge investment opportunity, um, growth, new, new top line drivers. 
um, that are changing the business where the CIO is kind of CEO-like, dealing with all the normal cost side, but really tra driving profits. So, so I got to get the, the, the question before we end the segment is, uh, cost center versus profit center, and, and you guys mm -hmm. you mentioned you guys are now P and L profit center. Right. How does that change the game, mindset wise, and how you execute, and what you can adopt, and how fast? Well, obviously the owners of the organization love the fact that we're we're offering that as a as an opportunity to generate some additional revenue. I'm assuming you took the, the facilities equation out of your P and L, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, no. so, so before, before before I joined the organization, did you write that down yes. yet, or? <laughs> well, I keep track of that for sure. Okay, okay. okay go ahead. Uh, but before I joined the, the our organization, I, I joke jokingly say this: we had more bandwidth than some banks. Um, I mean, we really had the the, the infrastructure in place, um, and fully redundant, and so forth. So we had long-term contracts. So I've got five-year contracts with services with companies that I have to keep. Uh, otherwise, you can pay the penalty and get out. But yeah. um, so we said, you know, why not leverage? And, and we did a virtualization project when I first joined. We, we recovered over 50% of our data center space. So I have all this empty space. I have all this bandwidth sitting here. I've got all the redundancies and the environmentals um, to be able to support that. Why not go after small companies? I'm not going to be able to compete, you know, with the, the bigger companies and that. But we're, we're, we're targeting some of the local companies, and uh, we're doing quite successful. Yeah, why not? That's great. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay, right, we're Tom. here live at the IOD conference. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs>